Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. What an insanely wild day. I mean, holy volatility, Batman. We had Bitcoin breaking up to about $38,000. Uh, we also had Swell in today. Uh, how did uh, XRP price react as a result of Swell ending? We'll talk about that. And also, we've got news that there's going to be a BlackRock spot, bit, uh, spot Ethereum rather uh, ETF application. So that's right, BlackRock supporting not just uh, Bitcoin in ETF form, but also ETH. And ETH has absolutely rocketed. And it's just so fascinating because whatever's happening in the, um, in the moment, it's just the, the way that markets manipulate human emotion, it will just never cease to fascinate me. And, I, and I'm well aware of this. I have been for many, 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 many years. But just to observe it on a regular basis, especially when we get these big moves, it's fascinating. And so we have people asking, well, what about XRP? Is It's it's down from a, even a day ago. I'm like, ah, but zoom out on a chart. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I'll tell you this too. Um, a couple things. As far as I'm concerned, short-term price action for me personally won't matter because either XRP goes to zero and then I'm just screwed or it hits a new all-time high and I sell. So like the short-term volatility, the day-to-day -day oscillations doesn't matter to me. I only follow it because I find it genuinely interesting because I have skin in the game. And, and you know what that's like. Once It's a lot more interesting and fun once you have something invested in. Uh, invested in something, although it can be terrifying for people too. But uh, also I wanted to say at the outset of the video that uh, out of the analysts that I follow, it's broadly accepted to be the case that, you know, from a structural perspective, we're still in bull mo mode, baby. It's like the, the fact that XRP is where it is and Bitcoin had this, uh, you know, major impulse, but then major crash back on down. Uh, this doesn't invalidate any sort of macro structure. That, that's what I've seen from analysts that I follow today. They all seem to have the same perspective. And in fact, we can even clearly see what happened, what caused uh, the price action to violently shift to the downside after Bitcoin roughly touched $38,000. Uh, so we'll unpack all that. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. As I record this latest hot jam, XRP is at $0.66. Cents. Bitcoin is $36,726. Market cap for the, the asset class over $1.4 trillion dollars. And despite the pullback that happened today, Crypto Fear and Greed Index at 70 out of 100. So y'all out there feeling pretty greedy, I see. <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm not surprised, honestly. I was kind of wondering if it would, I, you know, obviously with a crash like that, but we've also had a major surge over the last 24 hours, more than 24 hours. So it's not that surprising. I just kind of wonder how much higher it would have been if we hadn't seen the crash on down. Uh, but let's quickly talk about Swell. Look, I've made my position known. I've been talking about it a, a number of times over recent days. There's this narrative that Ripple Swell event causes XRP price to rise before and then crash afterwards after the event. And I've explained that that's just not true. We now have seven data points, including this year, because Swell has, there's been seven Swell events. And there's only been one where that actually happened, where XRP price rose and then ultimately crashed once the event started. And that was in 2018, and that was on the news, or was, it, was, it started on the rumor that uh, Ripple's X Rapid product was going to be launched, which ended up becoming known as on-demand liquidity. Uh, ended up being a true rumor, so when that was announced, uh, the price of XRP ended up plummeting on down. So that's the only time that that has actually been the case with Swell. But there's still this narrative that every single year, uh, you know, price is going to go, it's going to go up and then it's going to crash after Swell. You just got to get, it's the post-Swell crash. We got to be ready for this, except for it's not a real thing. So I've, I've, I've debunked this, but uh, I put out this poll a couple days ago on social media platform X. I wrote, will XRP price drop when Ripple's Swell event begins or ends due to a buy the rumor, sell the news type of situation? 64.8% responded yes, 35.2% responded no. And so I'm in the minority though. there. If I could have voted for my own poll, it would have been no. And I've made that pretty clear in recent days leading up to this. And so you actually had swell event end. And then I'm looking at the price it ended. I'm looking at like six, seven hours later, roughly. I'm like, well, it hadn't moved at that point, which wasn't surprising to me because it is indeed a bogus narrative. Um, and so I just wanted to highlight this. Like it, it it doesn't matter. So you can argue that XRP price was moving up as we were approaching the Swell event this year, and that's fine. I'm not going to go so far as to claim it's because of Swell, 
Because if you look at what analysts were saying for some time, just reading the charts and not applying what, whatever's happening in the news at the time, they said that was going to happen. And then if you talk about when did Start XRP start moving up versus when was the news dropped that Ripple Swell event was going to be on those dates, that doesn't line up either. So none, none of it actually makes sense. It just happens to be the case that XRP was going up roughly in a similar time period. That's about it. But I'm telling you, once uh, Swell ended, no, XRP didn't go down. In fact, XRP continued to move to the upside. Did you know that? I was watching this because I watched the moment that... Um, we were close to 38,000 for Bitcoin and it was totally wiped out. But XRP was actually, um, it, it had moved up a, maybe a couple cents or so, maybe as a penny and a half, up to just over 70 cents before the market crashed this morning. So it, again, why would that happen six or seven hours after swell ends if swell is supposed to cause it to drop? And so there's some people that were looking at the price action for XRP because it did get as low as 64 cents after the drop this morning. It's currently, again, at 66 cents. And people look at that, see, it's the swell effect. It's the swell effect. No, it's not. XRP, if you look at the chart, it was going up. In fact, uh, here's a 24-hour XRP price chart. Here you can see a little after 9 a.m. Uh, it was at 70 cents. Uh, now if you look at the 24-hour Bitcoin chart, you can see around 9 a.m., uh, Bitcoin close to $38,000. So Bitcoin crashed. And again, here's the XRP chart. XRP just followed. That's it. XRP followed Bitcoin. XRP did not go down because of swell. It went down because Bitcoin went down. So why did Bitcoin go down? Okay, now we can talk about that. <laughs> um, um, actually, oh, I want to read this one first, though, because I, I shared this post when, uh, what time was this? 8 something, 8, yeah, 8, 16 a.m. Central Time, which is my time zone. I posted, Bitcoin is on quite a rip, now in the 37,000s, and I shared a screen grab. It was at 37,567 bucks this morning, and uh, an XRP community member named Stillman XRP wrote, wish XRP would get on board too, uh, to which I responded, I personally would argue it is. XRP is up 38.91% over the last 30 days. Bitcoin is up only 36.09% over the last 30 days. And, and again, I understand that certain moments XRP rises more than Bitcoin and vice versa, and we should expect that. That's, that's pretty normal, and that, that's what the percentages were for that exact moment in time. I just hopped over to the live coin watch just to paint the picture. No, it actually is. XRP absolutely, and zoom in on a chart, you can see it. XRP absolutely is moving in tandem with, with Bitcoin. Um, now take a look at this. This is a, a post from uh, Will Clemente. He does all sorts of on-chain analytics, typically, 692,500 followers. And he shared this chart and wrote, Shorts wiped and then late longs immediately flushed. Are you not entertained? And I kind of laughed when I read that. I was like, I'm pretty entertained. Are you not entertained out there listening? I'm pretty entertained out there. Even with what's happening with XRP, all this, this bogus narrative about swell and then XRP went up despite swell ending. It went up before and after swell ended, actually. Uh, and then it just went down because that's what Bitcoin did. But look, so shorts shorts got wiped. So with the latest impulse to the upside, with Bitcoin hitting close to, to $38,000, yeah, the shorts absolutely got wiped. But then it's extra funny because at that point, there were people that decided, okay, well, I guess I better be long then. I'm now long Bitcoin. And then those people get flushed too. It, it is funny. It's just why when he, read, he read, it wrote here, are you not entertained? I was like, hell yeah, I am. Get the popcorn, bitch, because this is a good one. Oh, man. Uh, then there is this chart. Uh, that's, he's basically sharing the same chart. This is uh, analyst TXMC, formerly with Glassnode, which does all sorts of on-chain analytics stuff. I'm a big fan of TXMC. And he was just noting here that, uh, as far as Bitcoin is concerned, $1 billion uh, in, uh, in piled-up positioning was cleansed with that move. That's right. $1 billion that had piled in. <laughs> Ooh, doggy. Good times here in crypto, right? But check this out, because despite that happening, and we'll get into a little bit further about how this doesn't change the macro narrative in just a second, but there's this post from Scott Milker, uh, one of the more popular figures in the world of crypto. He's known as a, the Wolf of All Streets, 915,000 followers on X. And he was just noting that even if you started investing at the peak of the last cycle when Bitcoin is about $69,000, if you just dollar cost average in like once a week, you're in profit. So check, this is wild. This is why I keep saying, like it's worth having a long time frame and not beating yourself up. If you, if you, if you make a purchase of a cryptocurrency, you should assume it's going to be worth less in the future because it's a statistical virtual certainty that you didn't buy the literal bottom. 
So if you buy something, you should assume at some unknown point in the future, whether it's sooner or later, it's going to be worth less in the future, right? But that's why it makes sense to dollar cost average in, in general. That way you get broad exposure. Yes, sometimes you buy a little high, but sometimes you buy a little low and it washes out in the end typically, right? And this paints a perfect picture of that because he's noting even if you made the worst purchase, if you timed it the worst possible on accident, you buy at the peak of the last cycle. That's when you're buying Bitcoin, $69,000 you're still in a great position, relatively speaking. And he wrote here, if you started dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin roughly at the dead top of the last cycle, $69,000, buying $100 a week, then you have spent $10,000 and your position is worth $13,431.32. You are up 34.31% if you started at the dead top. Bitcoin spends very little time at the highs and gives dollar cost averagers seemingly endless time, endlessly time to accumulate during the lows. Just be a long-term investor. Slowly buy and you will reap the benefits. And folks, that's why all this this day-to-day uh, -day price action that you've seen today, I'm sure some people getting hit in the feels, oh my god, it's scary. What if it goes back down even further? Do, well, maybe you haven't... Okay, just a couple things. My brain's going like a million miles per hour. You're normal if you're feeling those things. I'm the weird that doesn't, okay, because most people do. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the minority that doesn't get hit emotionally with this stuff. But part of it is because I just allow logic to seep through to such a degree that it's not going to hit me. Because the question is, do you have conviction in, in what you're doing uh, in terms of your crypto investments? Because I do. I have very strong conviction with what I do. And I understand what I'm doing. I also understand the risks. And that's why I've held on to XRP and Bitcoin for coming up on six years now and I sleep easy and I just I've just I've, there are all sorts of periods of time where I've dollar cost averaging in I've, I've done that through highs and lows it doesn't matter and then I get broad exposure and all the stuff that I bought especially in the first few years that stuff's way up and then stuff that I bought more recently a lot of that's actually down now I'm still way ahead on the whole but you'd expect that because I've now been in, in crypto for coming up on six years but all this to say, even if you have horrible timing on accident and you buy the damn top, it, this stuff ends up working itself out because do you believe that in the future Bitcoin's going to be worth way more and XRP is going to be worth way more or do you not believe? Because that is my conviction. Um, and then there was this post at 8.13 a.m. Central Time from the blockchain backers. So this is a good, you know, roughly 45 minutes before we saw that. Uh, you know, Bitcoin is going to correct on back to the downside. It was blazing to the upside here. And he and he simply wrote 12, he's talking about Bitcoin here, 12 k are zooming out and having nightmares. And so those are all the doomsday people. Oh, Bitcoin, no, it's going down to $12,000. Don't see as many of those these days, do we? And so the fact that um, shortly after this Bitcoin moved to the downside, that does nothing to take away from the comment that he made here because nothing's changed from a macro perspective. Oh, you're going to see this type of volatility in the sh in the uh, in, in the short term. It, it's it's historically quite normal, frankly. And then the blockchain backer also posted this, and he shared this chart, which I'll make full screen. He said, uh, "Magical unicorn fairy dust, puppet masters pulling the puppet strings, God or a simulation simulation, total market cap of entire crypto market breaks up with sign of strength, gets through preliminary support." violently back tests it then blackrock ethereum uh, etf filing yeah and that uh, yeah that's that's then he has the laugh emoji because that is kind of hilarious how this actually played out here again are you not entertained <laughs> and and so by the way he, he's been articulating and he did today as well uh you know it's you know it's, he doesn't believe that we're going to be seeing new all-time highs for bitcoin or crypto just in general in a general sense without stocks breaking to the upside and moving directionally the same, which isn't necessarily what we're seeing right now. And so he's expressed concern that, you know, even, even if Bitcoin gets upward, you know, maybe say close to $50,000, uh, that may be it. Um, and there are other analysts, and there are also, well, okay, so a couple of things. There are analysts that have a fairly similar opinion to that and then think, yeah, we are going to hit roughly that, you know, mid 40s, up, you know, upper 40s, whatever it is for Bitcoin. Crater back down to the mid 30s and then continue move to the upside. And then you have some that think that, nope, that's pretty much it. And then we have to wait a lot, another long while. But um, I wanted to share this perspective from uh, chart analyst Michael Vandepop, who wrote 
It's expected to see Bitcoin reach forty-five to fifty thousand dollars pre-having, after which we'll have a heavy correction back to thirty-two to thirty-five thousand dollars and consolidate from there. Cycles repeat themselves, and Bitcoin has been suffering a lot the past two years. And so he is one of those people that thinks that we're going to see a move back to the downside. And so not that Michael Vandepop and the blockchain backer have the same opinions in terms of chart analysis. I'm just noting one fair similarity here, which is that after you hit that 45 to 50 dollar level, uh, move back down to the move back to the downside. Basically, I'm not saying that they have the same analysis. They don't actually, but it's just interesting that they have they thought at least in that one point uh, roughly a similar similar level uh, for where Bitcoin may be heading to. Now, Credible Crypto, uh, he's of the mindset that we are going to be seeing a new all-time high this year, and what has happened today doesn't really do anything to change that. Um, here's a post from Credible Crypto at 2.12 a.m., so this is, you know, over six hours before, you know, closer to seven hours before we saw uh, Bitcoin ultimately collapse back down and then stabilize for the remainder of the day. He wrote, we're at $36,500 for Bitcoin. Um, imagine how many people are going to sell slash short into 40k because they believe we can't make new all-time highs until post having, which is still a good six months away. They'll be the fuel for the fire that takes us to new all-time highs by the end of this year. And so look, he still has that conviction, and I'm telling you, and I saw some posts from him after the fact, you know, after the, the price cratered on today, uh, the conviction has not wavered, and you wouldn't expect it to for a short-term move like that necessarily, right? Because there's no, there's nothing that happened today that would have invalidated anything else that he set up. Um, and then there's also this, and I found this to be fascinating because as much as uh, 2022 was a complete doomsday year, uh, there's been tremendous recovery. Here's a post from chart analyst Will Clemente from this, and this it's from this afternoon, by the way, after Bitcoin cratered down from th roughly thirty-eight thousand dollars after. He wrote, Bitcoin has now retraced price from the FTX collapse, Three Arrows collapse, and Luna slash UST collapse. Absolutely love to see it. And so you may recall, being in crypto a year ago, it was the end of the world. Remember that? And Bitcoin ultimately got down to close to $15,000. Everything was dirt cheap. Um, sky is falling, all that crap. And I remember talking to my channel. I was like, uh, I'm pretty happy here. I'm just buying stuff. I bought all, I, and I talked about what I bought at the time. And I'm very glad that I did. Now my position is much larger. Positions are much larger. And <clears throat> and I noted at some point in the future, we would be in greed. And here we are. We're a year later. We're in greed. We're in high levels of greed. Bitcoin's been running despite this, the, the pullback today. Uh, we've had a, a, a complete retrace from the, the disastrous price action that we saw all of last year. So why are people losing sleep? It, like, I, understand, I understand the answer. But is it logical to let those emotions hit you? And I just argue no. And once once you let that seep in enough, it's much easier to sleep at night. I have no trouble sleeping even on the negative days. I mean, even a year ago, you listen to my videos from a year ago. I was cheery AF, son. <laughs> like, I was thrilled because I knew it didn't matter. I, I'm continue. I'm, I'm part of my investment thesis is that I continue to expect humans to respond like that, and and it results in them making very poor financial decisions. And then I'm going to capitalize on that because I'm betting against them, and they can they can bet against me. That's what they're doing too, by the way. It's not like that's mean. They're betting against me. If they want to get out of their positions and panic sell because they think that's what makes the most sense, okay. I'll take that bet. Um, and then there was this from Peter Schiff, because we got to talk about some of this ETF stuff, right? <laughs> Especially with what happened with ETH today, which is awesome news, by the way. Uh, but Peter Schiff, he's the guy that sells the yellow rocks, <coughs> a.k.a. gold. Um, smart guy, I agree with him on a whole bunch of stuff, but man, he's wrong about crypto, and he has just dug his heels in. I think at this point, it might just be the case that he's just got too much pride to admit he's wrong, because it's been 14 years, crypto's still here. And every time I see a post from him, I just ask, do you still believe the entire crypto asset class will go to zero dollars one day? I've been asking him asking him this for years. Uh, you know, I've had enough likes and reposts and stuff over the years that he's probably seen this and chosen not to answer. That's okay, he doesn't owe me a response. You know, he's, he's, a, he's famous in the world of finance, and for some reason, even in crypto, 982,000 followers. Um, and he's, he's very famous for having called the, you know, the, the 2008 financial collapse and all that jazz. And so he was trotted out on all the major news networks back then. But man, he's disastrously long, wrong about crypto. Now, that said, he might potentially have somewhat of a point here. Check this out. He wrote, Bitcoin is approaching $38,000 as speculators continue to front run a new Bitcoin ETF. However, once that ETF is launched, all of the speculators will have already bought. So when those buyers sell to take profits, there won't be many left to buy the ETF. 
get ready for a crash. All right, so look, here's my stance on this. I acknowledge it's certainly possible that once the news breaks, um, you see an immediate pullback or you see a ton of excitement. That's probably more, like more reasonable to suspect that you'd see to some degree, big or small, some sort of burst to the upside and then ultimately a correction to the downside because market's going to get uh, a little overzealous, let's say. But um, you know, in terms of who's left to buy, well, th- this is the thing. I, I don't buy the narrative that suddenly this news comes and then it's up only forever. Actually, I don't buy into that, which is why I've said many times, you know, yes, there, there certainly could be a pullback. Maybe there will be to whatever degree. But if you look over a span of years or maybe or even decades, more, more importantly, like the, you can't overstate the importance of this. So I don't buy into the narrative purely that this is rocket fuel and this is what brings us to new all time high. But I, because I, if you're talking mechanically what happens behind the scenes, it's not a snap of the finger thing. It's not a flip of the switch thing that this thing gets approved and then money flow in. That's not quite how this works. You can see excitement for those already participating in crypto markets, sure. But that's why I say over a span of many years or decades, the amount of money that will flow in, uh, it, it's hard to overstate the importance. But it's, it's not the case that when this gets approved, suddenly you've got Fidelity and Schwab and all these other major traditional finance players uh, offering it from day one. And then even if they were, they, the, the, all, all the investment advisors out there, they have to, to uh, pitch their clients on it effectively. You know, let them know, hey, this opportunity is available. And they'll do that. But again, over a, that's why I say over a span of a long period of time, yes, it's going to be profound the amount of money that will flow in. But if, but if you're talking about the mechanics of it, rather than just the excitement when the news hits, these are two different things. And I think that, yeah, it'll be fun when the news hits and Bitcoin goes up a bit, but don't be surprised if it goes back down to whatever degree. Okay. Uh, but Peter Schiff is wrong if he thinks that there won't be people to buy it. No, that has laid the groundwork for all of these major traditional finance firms to offer the product and then for them to go, for all the investment advisors at the firms, to go and push that on their clientele. That's what that sets the table for. So it's going to be way bigger. And if Peter Schiff doesn't understand that, it's just simply mind-blowing. But again, he's so negative on, on Bitcoin and crypto. It is what it is. I mean, if he still thinks it's going to go to zero after 14 years, I just wonder, is he going to be saying the same thing after 20 years and 25 years and 30 years and 35 years? Is it just zero forever no matter what? Or is at some point he going to look inward and be like, huh, I wonder what I got wrong? Because I think that a little self-reflection is due at this point. You've got to keep wondering... Why does it keep getting bigger? Why does everyone disagree with me if I'm so right? He's, he, he should be looking inward, but he doesn't seem to be capable of doing that, or, or at least if he has, uh, he, he doesn't, he's doesn't. he got too much pride to admit that, hey, my analysis was wrong. And that's frequently the case. I mean, you know, human creatures, interesting. Uh, but I also want to share this because there's perspective from Matt Hugan. He's a CEO at Bitwise Invest, at Bitwise Invest on X. And uh, they have a pretty large firm here. They have the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund and, um, you know, about a billion dollars in assets under management with this thing, one billion plus. And, and here's what they're saying from their clientele. This is interesting. And because you might be wondering, to what degree is the spot Bitcoin ETF actually priced into current price action? And, and for some people, some people have been buying as a result of this. I mean, I'm not going to deny that, but the question is, have most people, and to what degree we're going to see move to the upside once the positive news breaks, which I think is a virtual certainty? Well, check this out. Matt Hugan says the following. Each year, we survey hundreds of financial advisors about crypto. We're halfway through this year's survey. One of the questions we asked this year was, when when will a spot Bitcoin ETF be approved? 61% said 2025 or later. The ETF is not priced in if its intended audience doesn't think it's coming. <laughs> okay, now, that's fascinating. So that does still leave, you know, 39% question mark, right? Do they think it's coming sooner? But 61% said 2025 or later. Uh, I think they're wrong. I think it's going to be either the end of this year or the beginning part of 2024. That's my guess. And um, I, I got to say, like, as, as far as my, my my guess, which I've made, which is that BlackRock gets approved first, and then I said number two, if that's wrong, it's that you get a bunch approved all at once. I'm kind of leaning towards number two more at this point because I'm suspecting that my bias and hatred for the SEC, <laughs> to be honest with you, made me think that they're going to do more shady things and more unethical, ridiculous things and just let BlackRock go. But I don't know. Either way, I was always kind of splitting hairs. It's just been a, like a for fun guess anyway, and it still is even now. 
it makes me wonder, maybe it really is the case that what I should have as my number one is just a bunch of them get approved at once. But one thing I haven't really doubted is all, at all is that in the very short term, we are going to get this approval. And if I'm wrong about that, okay, fine. But I do think it's going to be either late this year or early next year. You know, as late as, potentially as late as March, but it could certainly be a lot sooner. But, but anyway, Matt Hugh brings up a good point here. If it's priced in, how come 61% say, no, we don't think that's happening? Because then they wouldn't be taking action in terms of investing in Bitcoin, right? So they wouldn't be front-running it. Makes you wonder. You know, I would just anticipate no matter what, the market's going to get overly zealous, so you're going to see too much, whether it's true or not, you're going to see a lot of excitement, and to some degree you will see a pullback, because that's just what happens anyway. It's what markets do. Uh, and then there's this BlackRock spot Ethereum ETF plan is confirmed after NASDAQ filing. And ETH is going for a ride here um, over the last 24 hours, up over 10%. Um, and now check this out. I want to put things in perspective. Despite the pullback we saw this morning, okay, so fine. You look at the 30-day. ETH's up 36.29%. But what about XRP? XRP is up 34.34%. So it's, it's, it's strikingly similar, actually. You know, XRP is actually, um, and so here, ETH, it just changed. Let me, I'll just read the number again. Uh, ETH up 36.29% for the last 30 days, and then XRP over the last 30 days, 36.24%, now 0.25%. So basically the same thing. And then you've got Bitcoin over the last 30 days, 35.69%. And so when people are saying, well, how come XRP is not doing well? I'm like, what are you talking about? And so people are so frequently just looking about looking at the short-term price action. We just had a, like a crazy rally where XRP in the, in the span of like 24 hours went up from like, what, 61 cents to 73 cents? That was a massive jump. And Bitcoin wasn't running at the time. What was wrong with Bitcoin? Was there something wrong with Bitcoin? Was there something wrong with ETH? No, they don't run at exactly the same times. It's just that if you zoom out on a chart, it'll, it'll, it's, it's close enough that it'll appear they do. But today was an ETH day. Awesome. Good for ETH. I hold ETH. You know, it, it's, it happens to be the first cryptocurrency I ever purchased. I still hold ETH. Um, and, and so, again, the percentages are about the same. It's just this, this feeling. If the thing that I'm into most, and in this case, we're talking about XRP, if it's not going, why not? Well, it, but it is. <laughs> it's just the emotions get the best of people here. So, yeah, I'm glad to see that ETH, ETH is running here. So, but check out the news. BlackRock's plans for a spot Ethereum exchange-traded fund has now been confirmed for a per a 19B4 form filing submitted to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission on November 9th. NASDAQ filed the 19B4 form to securities regulator on behalf of the $9 trillion asset management firm for a proposed ETF called the iShares Ethereum Trust. The move signals BlackRock's intention to expand beyond Bitcoin with its ETF aspirations. Yeah, and so... There's really nothing more. I don't need to read the rest of the article. That That's it in a nutshell. And I'll just note here, and I, I mentioned this before, in recent months, once uh, once you get a, a, you know, a spot Bitcoin ETF rolling here, and once that gets approved, like it opens the floodgate. So yes, we had to wait. I mean, Bitcoin's been around, you know, call it you know, over 14 years at this point, a little less than 15 live. All this time, and it's taken that long to get to a point where finally we're going to get, we believe anyway, uh, broadly speaking, I think most of us believe, we're going to get this spot Bitcoin ETF. But then, as far as getting approval for the next uh, an ETF, spot ETF for the next crypto, in this case, it's probably going to be ETH, what's that going to take? M months later? It's like once the floodgates open, they're open. The the SEC is going to seed this ground. It, like, it, just, it just is. That's what's most, I believe anyway. And there will be others. Eventually, I do believe that there will be an XRP one. It's just not going to be the first or second here. But you can see the direction this all is going. In BlackRock, I do not believe they'd be filing for this if they didn't already have an incredibly high level of confidence that they knew what the outcome would be. They know they're going to get approved with a virtual certainty or an actual certainty. Who knows? It's coming, though. And so the best is yet ahead. It's fun to be in crypto. And so even if it's the case that, you know, we only see... Bitcoin break up to about $50,000, and then we have to wait a prolonged period of time for another cycle where we're, until we finally hit the new all-time high and say that's over a year from now. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Again, like I was, you know, kind of getting at it earlier on the video. I'm going to be here because the short-term price action doesn't matter. I'm always I'm going to keep earning new money along the way, and I just keep putting it in. And I just, I never thought I'd own this dollar value in crypto that I have. 
And it's insane, but I've just, I've had this time to accumulate. And so when this thing finally goes, at some point I'm going to be enticed to sell. Whether it's, whether Credible Crypto's right and we hit a new all-time high sooner and then the, like the entire crypto market goes, great, then I'll finally sell. Or if it's over a year from now and I have to wait even longer, okay, great, that's a year or two, whatever it takes, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be ready for that. And I'll be purchasing along the way at times when I believe it makes sense for me. And I'll talk about those when they occur in my rationale for doing so. But all I do is buy, and then I do nothing. I just hold. And I've been at this uh, now close to six years. So even if it takes another two years before I finally am like, okay, this is life-changing, I'm selling. Okay, long journey, but for the amount of money that I anticipate it's going to mean for me, well worth it. It, it. It's it's just, it's a fun ride anyway. But it's coming. It's it's it, it's just, I just, I, I, I feel bad sometimes for the people that just, they can't help it and they just, the, the feelings get to them, but I am at total peace and I wish that people were, were able to just let, like, absorb the data and let that override the emotion. I wish more people could do that. Um, just on a personal level. Now, on a selfish investment level, I'm glad that they can't because if everybody actually could do that, then we'd be in trouble. Because like, you'd have a world of investors where it's just a bunch of moon Lambos. And then if we're all at stalemate, none of us are going to you know, sell at a loss. Do we even have a market? <laughs> so it is a good thing that not everybody... Uh, is actually acting like me because there'd be no volatility in markets, which is the purpose of investing. But I still think I'm going to, you know, I'll still continue to mention it here because if it can help people here that, that are in our community, then awesome. You know, but uh, is what it is, man. We humans are interesting creatures, right? So either way, the good news is whatever happens, it's fun. There's always going to be stuff to talk about. It's exciting. And there really is this opportunity for life-changing wealth. We just don't get to control the timeline. We get to participate. We get to be part of this once-in-a-species thing with the advent of crypto. What a time to be alive. Uh, but I just say don't sweat the short-term stuff. Don't sweat it. You know, if you're investing in crypto, I would hope that pretty much everybody, if they're serious about this, has a, a long enough mindset that they're looking out, you know, five, ten years at least, which is certainly what I was doing when I jumped into crypto. And I, I said that even when I launched my YouTube channel, I was talking about my my thought process, even the earliest of days, and now I've been at it almost six years, and I just said a couple minutes ago, even if it takes a total of eight years for me to finally cash, whatever it is, I don't care what the timeline is. I mean, I, prefer, I guess I prefer sooner than later, but the point is it's not going to impact my feelings or what I, how I actually behave when it comes to my important financial decisions. The opportunity is here. So uh, chin up, everybody, and XRP is like, look, Bitcoin's not done. XRP is not done. What is most probable is we're going to see dramatic moves to the upside. The question is how high? We're going to find out soon enough. We're going to find out together. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.